The Small Business Show, episode 378 for Wednesday, May the 4th. Be with you. 2022. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to or welcome back to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co where we are small businessing every week. Sponsors for this episode include a new sponsor, itrust.capital slash SBS, where you can invest in cryptocurrencies inside your IRA. This is something I wish I had at my disposal a couple of years ago, but I'm glad that we have it now. Uh, and also a returning sponsor, Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash small, where you can go there right now to schedule your free HR audit and free trial. So uh, we'll talk more in depth about how you're going to do each of those things in a little bit here. But for now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How you doing, man? I'm all right. This has been kind of a frazzling week, but that's it's good. Like, you know, lots frazzling. going on. That's, yeah, that's good. That's a new term. I haven't uh, frazzled. I frazzled, but frazzling is it, good. Yeah, yeah. It's At been a frazzling my, week. Uh, well, in, yeah. in that the end result of it is I'm frazzled. And when I say the end result, it's Tuesday, well, Tuesday. afternoon. Yeah, I'm aware <laughs> of this. Right. <laughs> We, um, yes. we had a, a, you know, I, I haven't talked much about it recently because it, it's been kind of a, th- there's been some heads down work that that's not entirely exciting to talk about, but there is that, that other business that I don't talk about that we, uh, have been looking into selling. We're, we're partnered yeah. with an M- M&A firm and we've been having some, uh, some meetings with prospective buyers. Like we're at that point. There's no offers on the table yet. It's it's just you know it's uh, but those are coming. Like what a you know, great learning process. It's been fantastic, and that's been the learning part of it has been. It's so good because you know I've never done anything like this before, and it's just fan. It's so fascinating to me. What's going on? There's, you know, there's a bunch of partners. Uh, I, I have multiple partners with this business and the, our, our M&A firm, you know, had set up one of these meetings. I have been, it. I, I have taken point on this inside the company. Obviously we have the M&A firm doing their work and they're the professionals, but we know that this process of selling a business can be one of those things that becomes like a spider where it just goes everywhere. Right. And so we've been compartmentalizing it. And I've, it's, you know, my job is to sort of run point on it and only involve my partners when they need to be involved, when I need information from them or, you know, they're the right ones to answer a question or something like that. But otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm taking kind of the, the brunt of it all so that they can continue doing their jobs and we can keep running the company and growing the company and, and, you know, assuming like it's not going to be sold and just keep, you know, cranking forward. And, uh, and so our, our m and guy had invited me to a few of these meetings uh, over the past couple of weeks. And then he invited all of us to one of them. And, I asked him, I said, are you sure you like what's different about this one? Why? Why do you want all of us? And he's like, well, yeah, that makes. Yeah, it was it was an interesting thing, right? Like, it's like, what's the what's the deal? He's like, well, he's like, I didn't want anybody to feel uh, he's like, I knew I wanted you and and the the tech person, believe it or not, in this company, I am not the tech person, which is fascinating. I mean, I am a technical person, but I'm not the tech person at this company. And uh, he's like, I wanted, you know, that person there to be able to talk about some of the the specifics. I'm like, yep, that makes perfect sense. He's like, but I, I didn't want anybody else to feel left out or offended. And I stopped him and I said, OK, we need to have a heart to heart about this here. Yes. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? You're, it, yeah, what what's what, your job? What's your job? Yeah. And I, I told him, I said, you don't need to worry about offending us. I said, first of all, you know, we're all grown adults here. We really have for a variety of reasons that I, that I will talk about on the show at another time, but this partnership has worked out such that there's no egos involved uh, or if there are, they're very well managed. Yeah. It's just been wonderful. And and so I said, look, but even if there were like, you know, it's your job to make sure we're represented as best we can. And I said to him, I said, we're all aware that the more feet we bring to this meeting, the more mouths they could wind up in. And I know that that's, yeah, that's a bad like thing. That. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and it's not a a, a knock against anybody else. No. But it's like, you know, if you have no experience being in meetings like that, uh, it's one thing if you're listening, but if, if, you know, questions come up and, you know, you feel inclined to answer, you just got to be careful how you answer things. Yes, ex- exactly. And, and and I imagine there's, tra- you know, I mean, I've, I've sold, you know, a few businesses and I, I imagine that an M&A guy is probably guiding you and giving you some feedback, some training, if you will, uh, and how to, how to attend these meetings and what to say and what not to say, right? Yes, absolutely. It's kind of like selling a house, if you've ever ah, been through that go. process. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I think I know that our M&A firm has a lot of the same licenses that a realtor would have. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it is super similar, right? You, you have it, when you're selling a house, you're selling one thing to one buyer, right? It's not like you've got six houses that you're selling, you know, or 600 houses and you're, you know, you're looking to market a product that is replicatable. It's not replicatable, right? It's one thing that it will eventually, hopefully, yes. be sold to one buyer, and that's it. And so, one word can tank the whole thing. <laughs> you got it. That's correct. Yeah. For example, this week, uh, you know, I had been on a couple of these calls, and we did a, a coaching call before the one this week. And I, I call it a coaching call. It was more just a prep call. I mean, there wasn't any, you know, there, well, there was one moment of coaching where he said to me, clearly based on what I had said in previous meetings like these, he said, hey, one thing, uh, don't say to be honest. He said, oh, yeah, better sure, to sure. say to be candid or candidly he says the problem. And I knew exactly where he was going as yeah. soon as he said it. He said the problem with to be honest is it implies that you have not been honest not so been far. Honest, yeah. yes. Yes. <laughs> and as soon as he said it, it was like, okay, I wrote it on a sticky and I put it at the bottom of my monitor because we were doing a Zoom meeting. It was like, okay, remind yourself. Because I because I have been honest with these people all the way through yes. it, you know. But it's a it's a common term you you know yeah. uh, that people use. But but it does have that connotation and your brain does think that. Yes. You know? Yes. You can't help but but Yes. <laughs> so I so, love that this concept where you number one pick a point person to interact, you know, with the the company that's helping you sell the business and they can relay things back and forth and you know, as long as you have transparency. Yeah. You, yeah. You're all going to sign the deal, right? You're Correct. you know, uh Correct. and yes. then <laughs> and, and and then picking the people that need to be at the meeting based on their need to be at the meeting, right? That's it. Um, we, and we've had, we've done episodes on how to host meetings. And the, one of the first questions you ask is, do I need to be here? <laughs> you know, cause if you don't, you then don't waste your time. Don't waste everybody else, uh, everybody else's time. Yeah. Just get out of the way. Yeah. Get that's, out of the way. That's the key. Yeah. I, I would have known that. I know. Well, that's the thing is, you know, you learn this stuff and I, I, it's been, it's been a really interesting process because, you know, we, we're a small company and we, you know, we are being, there is interest from places that are larger than us, which would make sense. Right. Like that's how that works. But there's also, you know, a, a lot of the, the questions that they ask are, you know, well, we want to see your financials, which of course we've, that's, that's been sort of the boring part of this that we've been doing over the past couple of months is preparing the financials in a way that, shows up for them. We've run this business as a cash based business and it is, you know, uh, some of these people want accrual stuff and they want to be able to see it this way. And, and at first my temptation was, well, okay, we can, you know, do, we can restate this and we don't really have that data, but I think we can get there close. And finally, I, it just in one of these meetings, I said, look, I, I'm, I need to tell you, we run this business as a cash business. It was built to be a cash business. It has right. been a cash business. It's profitable. Like I, I can tell you anything you want to know that I know about the business. I'll tell you, but I don't have accrual based books because we've never run them that way. And that just opened up the doors. Everybody relaxed. And it was, and I even joked, I said, you know, I, I referred to our M&A guy and I'm like, he yells at me that we don't have these and I'm sorry that we don't have these, but that's just the reality of how we've run the business. And, and it's, you know, it, it was, everybody was like, yeah, okay, we get it. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Honesty. You know, I was being honest despite (laughs) my, my, you (laughs) You don't want to say that, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Well, I think that's a, a important thing to, you know, it's okay if, uh, 
And I find myself doing this too. You're in a meeting and you're working and negotiating and you're trying to impress uh, and also, you know, adjust your, what's going on to them. Kind of like pacing and leading pacing and leading. That's the, pre- that's exactly it. Yeah. But you don't, you know, you got to be careful that you get yourself in, in a little trap there. If it's not the way, okay, that's not the way it is. And and it's okay to go, wow, that sounds great. And that's just a great opportunity for someone who buys the business for because you. we don't do that right now. Imagine how yeah. much more successful this business could yes. be if we, or you were to do these things that you're asking us if we've done. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And, and I've had it where you're just like, oh, I don't even know how to do that. So I don't know. I how. think that's great. That's yeah. exciting, but we've never tried it. And I don't know, you know, that, or, and, and it, I think it's, it's okay to, to just be, Oh, I don't know. It's transparent. I, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. cause it's the, tr- it, you know, I had a, a business partner, my uh, original co-founder with backbeat media, Greg Snyder had the, uh, he, he has this, had this phrase that, that he uttered a few times while, you know, during our, our history together, well, you know, we would be preparing for some important thing or whatever. I'm like, well, we could just tell him this. And he, and he liked to add, well, yeah, it sounds good. And it has the added benefit of being true. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. The added benefit of being true. That's <laughs> great. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's good. And, you know, if you're a small company, it, I uh, speaking for myself, you know, I can remember pitching and trying to get partners and getting, you know, money and all this kind yeah. of stuff. It, it's very easy to expand, to make things sound bigger than they are, more complex than they are. And uh, you don't need to do that. No, you definitely don't want to do that. I mean, it, whoever, no. it, nope. you know, assuming that there's a buyer that, that comes up with an offer that's acceptable to us, we will then hit right. into due diligence. Uh, yes. You know, whatever was said during the, you know, those pre-negotiations had better match what they're going to find during due diligence. Otherwise, and they're going to find everything during due diligence as well. They should like, that's how it's going to work. So yeah, you really don't want to mislead anyone. I mean, you don't want to mislead anyone period, but in this yeah. scenario, yeah. you especially and, and like, don't well, like want I, to. I, yeah. That's correct. And I talk about good leaders learn how to manage the truth. Yeah. And it, it it's the way you pitch it is important. The way you talk about it. But in these situations, you know, really uh, being upfront and um, yep. open about things. Cause like you said, you know, there's going to be some digging if things go forward and you just want to be transparent and authentic and say, Hey, you know, maybe one of the reasons we're, you know, you could say we're one of the reasons we want to sell is because the business is ready to go to the other, the next level. Well, that, and we just don't know how to do it. That, that yeah. well, that is what we say. And there it has go. the added benefit of being yes. true. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. We know we're not the ones to take it to the next level. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, we have, uh, we have a part two to do here, Shannon, don't we? We do. Yeah. You know, we talked last week about, uh, why it's important to have career paths for your employees and all the added benefits you get. And then we started to talk about how to do it. We, we focused on creating the org charts and how to do that. So if you missed that episode uh, last week, go back and listen to that. Cause uh, in a few minutes, we're going to go on to the next section and um, go in and start with why job descriptions and ladders are really important. Uh, I like it. All right. The uh, I want to do that. The next thing that I want to do, though, is I want to tell everybody a little bit more detail about each of our two sponsors, if that works for you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, by now, we've all probably heard about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. You might even already be investing in them. But did you know that you could invest in cryptocurrencies through your retirement account? I wish I had known this years ago. That's right, because with iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies from a crypto IRA and get all those lovely same tax advantages as a traditional IRA. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in over two dozen of the most popular cryptocurrencies, and unlike the stock market, you can buy and sell 24 hours a day. The iTrust Capital platform is easy to use and it only takes a few minutes to create your account. Setting up an IRA is free and iTrust fees are low. It's time to start taking control of your financial future. And with iTrust Capital, you can get all the tax benefits of a retirement account while investing in crypto. So visit itrust.capital/sbs and start investing today. That's itrust.capital/sbs. 
Taxes and conditions may apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment with risk of loss. iTrust Capital Inc. does not provide legal investment or tax advice. Consult with a qualified legal investment or tax professional for that, of course. And our thanks to iTrust Capital at itrust.capital slash SBS for sponsoring this episode. Listen, nothing is more important to your small business than your people. You want to take care of them? And you can take care of them with real HR support from our sponsor, Bambi. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses like yours. So you can automate the most important HR practices and, like I said, get your own dedicated HR manager. Yes, a real human. First, Bambi's HR autopilot automates your core policies, workplace training, and employee feedback. Then, your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guide you towards compliance. Available by phone, email, or real-time chat, whichever you like. Listen, in-house HR managers aren't cheap, right? They can cost up to eighty grand a year. But with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. That's right. $99 a month. No hidden fees. Cancel any time. It's fantastic. I love that they are doing this because it's so easy for those of us who are small business saying to overlook HR. It's not a part of the day to day, but man, get it wrong and it can be the end of you. So listen, go to Bambi.com slash small right now for your free HR audit spelled B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash small Bambi.com slash small and our thanks to Bambi for sponsoring this episode. All right. Creating career paths for your employees, for our employees. Part two. Time right. to talk about, uh, like, like you said, more about the how. Starting with job yeah, descriptions sure. and ladders. That's right. And, you know, the underlying uh, concept here is, you know, you're creating all these things to help other people. But in turn, you know, of course, it's going to help you and your small business. Um and one of the things, you know, we talked about the org chart and that e-myth yeah. concept where when you start, you know, you put your name in every box, but you're kind of creating this future uh, of what your business is going to look like and all the roles that you do. I think it, one another good way to do it is with job descriptions. And I say, la I call ladders or use that term ladders as well is because the job description can, you know, obviously it's got to describe what you do <laughs> in the job, but sure. it also should have some things like prerequisites you know what do you need to know to get this job you know uh, what's the you're a tech you know, i always lean back on the tech thing because that's what my, that's what you did uh, yeah stuff we did so you know it's like oh you're a tech level one well in order to become a level two you have to you know be in this position oh. for so long um and then part of the job description should also include the next steps for advancement you know and, and it could be all kinds of different things you, you know you could go into a whatever position, but uh, having that as part of the job description, where you're coming from to get that job and what the next steps is really a great way to get across to people. Look, we, we want you to continually uh, advance into new roles here. Okay. So I, I like this idea, right? It, when you talk about it, it sounds good. When we go to apply this to our businesses though, I, it, it almost sounds insincere. Right. And, and, and really? well, let, let me wow. explain this because I, I need yeah. to be talked out of this. I know I'm the one that's wrong here. So be, be like, maybe, <laughs> be, well, <laughs> <Who knows? laughs> maybe, sure. Fair. Uh, it, you know, the idea of, let's say you have a you know small company, 10 people yes. or less. Right. And you bring someone in and you say, OK, well, I'm starting you as a, you know, level one uh, technician Whatever. for yeah. us. Right. Yeah. Yep. And if you do the, you know, stay here long enough and you do these things and you'll become a level two technician. Now, if there are no level two technicians yet yes. that that person could look up to because, right, we're bringing new people in. So, OK, you know, it seems like we're calling we're, we're just coming up with names for things that don't exist. And and that's the part where I feel insincere about it right but okay i, I mean i yeah. like the idea of incentivizing someone saying you could earn up to level two but when there is no formal like when there is no one at level two the structure isn't there eh, like wh what are we actually doing to, here? I, I believe yeah I, I i think i mean I, and i appreciate that uh 
that sentiment. So you're going to have to, if you're just starting out or you're hiring somebody for that position, you, you have to describe it like that. It's like, look, we're, we're trying to create a system here. So yeah. when we grow and meet some benchmarks, and maybe you need to set those benchmarks, when we can afford to hire a, a person underneath you to actually create a department, this is the next step that you can go. Got it. Right? And, and so oh, I like that. Do, okay. Yeah. And you do have to be ready to kind of defend it, if you will, because as I mentioned before it, and on the show, everybody will remember everything you said forever. And they will hold it you know? against you. Yeah. Well, and they might not remember it, everything, but they'll remember not, the things that they can hold against you. That's for yeah, sure. Or, yes. or, or maybe not hold against, but hold you accountable. For yeah. That's yeah. That's okay. no, that's a much better. They term. said, look, you said I could become a level two, whatever salesperson. Da, 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 yeah. Da. yeah. Um, you have to be able to go, yes, I did. And and you may even have to put it in writing. You may need to say, once we reach some benchmarks and can afford to hire the next person, this is the long-term plan. You you need to confidently be able to go back and say, well, we're not at that point yet. Or we haven't met those benchmarks. So I, oh, I, I like the this. business, the no, business no, can't afford you, you, to hire that person. You just changed right? my whole outlook here. Yeah, because you're helping me. You, the goal is, is you're getting their buy-in. Look, this is a great job. You could do this particular job for whatever, year, two, three, whatever. Yep. It, when you're ready to take on something else, this is what needs to happen to move you into that position. And that helps grow your business. It's, no, it's, it's, it's the right, them. it's the right way to do it. Yeah. Because you're, you're not just showing an investment in your employee. You're showing, well, leadership at, at its core, right? Like uh, I have an idea as to where this is going to go and I'm willing to say it out loud that, that right. I have this idea where it's going to go, even though, there's no path there, right? Like there's well, no one has walked this path before. Yes. We're going to walk it together, but this is the path that I see happening. Now, I mean, obviously things can change and you can adapt as you go, but you got it. by laying that path out, well, it's, I mean, it's, you're the same as your, you know, I pick the end of the story. I pick the story I want to tell so that I, I have an easier time figuring out how to get there. It's, yeah, it's they, that same They take thing. ownership of it. Of course. Right? It, it's, yeah. It's, of so course. you start that on day one or at some point, it doesn't have to be day one, but at some point you sit down and go, look, I, I want your help with this. This is my my vision here. I'm trying to do this. And and let's talk about that path because it's yeah. important. I'm going I'm to skip ahead a little bit. But um, we're not skipping ahead. We're all just right here together. It's all good. Yeah, nobody sees my notes. So no, they don't matter. see your notes. Uh, <laughs> that's right. But if if they hit that, let's say they hit a ceiling and they there's no place for them to go. Right. Well, I would suggest you need to be ready to help them. And it could be an opportunity for you and them because I, I'm inevitably someone's going to come to you and say, you know what? I've learned a lot. I'm going to go start my own business because I think I can do this better. Or I'm going to move. I'm, I'm moving to another part of the state, another yep. part of the country. And I want to do this. That is a tremendous opportunity for you as a business owner to get involved with another business and to either yes. perhaps help them financially. If you can't do that, perhaps you can help with resources, mentoring, uh, guidance that you can come up with some ownership part of the business to, mm. to you know, use that thing and, and maybe fund them a little bit. There's, it's not the end when employees leave to go do something on their own. Oh no, no, I, I agree. Great opportunity yeah. for you. Yeah. 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 yeah so for I, sure. I think that's important. Um, on this job description, this ladder thing that I'm I'm talking about too, you know, I think salary ranges are great to put on there oh. because you know now you may not know what they are, but you certainly know where they're going to start. And yeah. over time, yeah, I th I think you'll get a good sense of look, you know, if you're a level or if you're this person, or maybe it's a commission salesperson uh, that you can say, look, once you reach this level, we'll we're going to increase this or do these kind of things. But I think yeah. people always want to see a range of op what their opportunities are. Um, part of this can be also training what educational opportunities are available for you. Hey, look, as part of this role, we're going to send you to this, get you this certification because, you know, in the yeah. tech field. Oh, that can be, you know, before yeah. You be, yeah. You, we want these certifications and all that kind of stuff. And lastly, on this topic, once they get there, they're showing you they're reliable I believe you give ownership to the job description to that person. 
And Let it, I mean letting them write the the next yes. job description, and modify it, adapt it. Yeah, you, you know you keep you keep different ones, but they're going to know hopefully the job better than you do. Well, so that's they're the gonna idea. Know, yeah, you need to be able to produce this. You need to do create this. You got to make a certain number of phone calls. Here's your expectation, and these people are helping you build out your organization. It's an awesome opportunity. It doesn't have to fall on your shoulders if you think of job descriptions in a little different manner. I love you. Yeah. You're blowing my mind here. This is, this makes perfect sense because I always, you know, I am used to paving or, or just heading into the unknown. I mean, I, but forget about paving the way, just like just going there and then figuring out how to pave it. Once you're there, that that's totally fine for me. And it's normal for me now. I, I, I'm sure there was a time when it wasn't, but it's, you know, it's been my life for decades. So, yes. I, you know, there, I, I have fear and concerns about other things, but th that's not one of them. It's like, oh, yeah, we're just we'll figure it out as we go. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That, and, and I can't take credit for this, you know, uh, uh, whole, wholly take credit because sure. I had some great people and I had people come back to me and say, hey, you know what? This is the job I'm doing. Here's the job description. Yeah. It's not quite what you brought me in to do. Not what you think it was, right? Yeah. What you think it was. Let me explain. And, you, and then and, I was like, wow, and that's, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's normal in a small company. I mean, it, it you know, yeah. people's jobs will take on, I mean, to say they take on their personalities is probably accurate, but more accurate is they take on the skills and the interests of that person, uh, you know, and that's, that's just yeah, how that's going right. to, that's how it's going to work. But no, this makes sense. Yeah. Cause not everybody is comfortable saying, we'll just figure it out. Uh, but if you, if you lay a little bit of structure around it, then people won't realize they're the ones figuring it out necessarily. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. And I think you have to be happy with, you know, this is also kind of a map, but it's, it's a map of opportunities and, and yeah. not everybody has to continue to excel and move up. You, you that's okay. And, and it's okay to, I, I think to tell your people that it's like, Hey, you know, if you become a supervisor of this department and that's just your thing and you're super good at it, it if you stay in that role, you know, it's not, Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Because yeah. you get that, that Peter principle, you know, you don't want to just keep, uh, you know, promoting someone until they get into a job that they're no good at. And, and you need a, a, a an escape hatch in that case. So you don't lose good people. You know, yeah. you need to be like, Hey, this didn't work out, but I would either love for you to step back and do this, or let's try something different, you know, cause the, the, that concept, you can lose good people. I've had Oh that. yeah. Well, and I, and I like that, you know, as, as we're talking about this and I, and I realize we're talking maybe not at a 10,000 foot level, but certainly not at a, a 10 foot level, you know, we're, we're maybe at 2,500 right. feet here, but I, I like that this isn't just a function of time. You know, you stay as a level one tech to, to stick with the example, you stay as a level one tech for, you know, 18 months and then we will promote you to a level two tech. It's, it's not a function of time solely. It's, yeah. you know, you've, you've accomplished these things. We as the business have accomplished these things in part because you've been doing your job at level one for so long and, and successfully that the business has been able to grow to the point where not only do we need a level one tech, but we need a level two tech. So we'll move you into level two and someone new into level one. And maybe you train them if it's the appropriate for that to happen, you know, all of that stuff. Sure. But yep. I, I, I like this idea of tying someone's advancement to the growth of the business because that's true, right? It has the added benefit of being yes. true. You know, like yeah, we, and, and we you, can't have a level two tech today because we don't need them. We only have room for one tech or whatever yeah. it is, you know? So yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it, and it holds both parties accountable. The, yes. the business needs to give certain things for this person to advance, right? That's right. Whether that's training tools, whatever education, stuff, resources uh, of some kind, kind. Sure. resources. Yes. Yeah. And at the same time, the employee needs to, uh, is accountable because they need to, to perform certain actions to learn, to take on more responsibility, to move into the next thing. And it always, it, it's the answer to the question when people come ask you for more money. Because it's laid out. It's very clear. Yeah. And so you don't have to go, well, uh, uh, you know, we're not making the worst thing to ever tell your employees. I can't give you more money because because the business isn't making enough. Yes. Yeah, it may be true. 
but I would yeah, never say that. Yeah, but that's a that's a not. It's I, I've said that in the past because so have I, and, and I've learned yeah. a lesson. And they yeah. start looking at well, look at the car you drive, and you're going on vacation, and you're doing this, and you 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 need to separate it out. It's like one of the reasons I like not doing performance reviews and salary reviews at the same time. Oh, because it yeah right it gets you away from. Uh, uh, a lot of sticky conversations that you can go, okay, hey, here's your performance. This is what we're doing. And this is how you're, you're moving along this path. And then later on, when you're meeting with your accounting department, looking at things, they have this range of salary and you go, great. Okay. And then at some point you may say, hey, you've capped out on this range. If you want to move up, you need to take these classes, get another certification. It's just a roadmap for them. How do you, how do you right. go about defining a, a salary range. I mean, let's say we know where the starting point is, right? I mean, that because yeah, that's a whole sure. different conversation, although not a bad one to have. But but once you've started, you know, you got the starting point. You know, let's, let's say I don't know, whatever, forty grand a year. You know, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, right, whatever it is. Yeah. Yep. Uh, how how do you define a range from there? How would how do you approach? Very it? scientifically. Okay. You just make it up. <laughs> 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 I mean, I can tell you in the beginning, I was like, well, I don't know. Let's make, I just made it up and like, okay, so let's start this. And I always use, I never use round numbers. You know, okay. I think it's more eff effective to say, okay, this starting range is 42,000 through, you know, $540. Yeah. And, uh, the range is up to uh, $54,890, you know, Amazing. because people look at those numbers and goes, wow, they really thought about it's, that. They're, that's, they're, that's a unique, it's not an arguable you know, number, right? No, it's just a, that's it, you know, and some people are going to look at that and go, oh, that's just not enough for me. Well, you can have that discussion. Go, would you, based on your experience, we're going to start you at, you know, 49 that, you know, they, yeah. it, it's all arbitrary. Now, over time, I think you will learn that range works. This range doesn't. Of course. Uh, of you know, course. You, yeah. Okay. You can't pay a level one tech that, or, or boy, you know, level two techs making 80 grand a year, 150,000 a year. Sure. Well, I, you know, for your business, it all depends and you have to continue to tweak things. Um, Adjusting, so I, you know, I have a question, yes. you, you know, give, given your example, there was about a, a, a 15, 15 to 20% uh, gap between the low end of the range and the high end of the range. Is, is that something that you have ever thought about before or no? No, I just, okay. I just, I just start with some numbers that yeah. I know. Number one, the bottom number is the most important. To of course. With. Yes. And then you're going to give them some range yeah. and then you have to, th then you have to put them in the spreadsheet and compare them to the other positions that you've got. Yeah. Uh, and I really like, you know, even um, people that aren't maybe used to getting paid on performance. I love tying bonuses. I, I would much rather give a bonus than increase your salary, oh, right? Yeah. Because if Every I increase day. your salary, that's it forever. Yeah, you can't go back. <laughs> you're never take. That's right. You're never taking that away. That's right. So with a bonus, like, well, here's your base, and you know, if your department produces, you know, this, you're going to get a bonus of whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I've had people get six figure bonuses on in great years, and that was awesome because we we had the cash to do it. Of course. But then yeah. the next year. Maybe we didn't, and we only gave them a, a, a 5% bonus. Yeah. So they're tied into the, the performance of their job. The job, their the company. Yeah, right. The company, all those kinds of things. But uh, I, I, I like think it. it works really well. I like um, it. Another, you know, just kind of wrap this concept up. Mentorship's really important for, for the mentor and the mentee. Uh, if that's a word. Yes, um, it is. It, Th those are the correct you know, words. Yes. Yeah. You want to have that discussion when you bring on new employees. Like, hey, you know, as you learn, you've got so much to, to offer and to, to help. We want you to mentor new employees that we bring in. Or maybe you need to mentor somebody in the sales department so they learn how this tech technical stuff mm. impacts their, their business, right? It could be across department. Um, really important. It makes them feel better. Uh, you, you should, I, I really love giving them a budget. It's like, Hey, you're mentoring this person or this group of people. Maybe I'm going to give you a budget, you know, whatever. It could just be something as simple as a couple hundred bucks a month just sure. for them to go take people to lunch, oh, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Maybe you want them to take someone to a trade show. Maybe you want the, other employees connect with your employees on an entirely different level than you do. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Right. Yes, of course. Uh, and yeah. so you can mentor as well and you should, 
but having their peers mentor to them is is terrific and you'll get a lot of great feedback they won't tell you stuff because you sign their paycheck right uh, but they'll tell other people stuff and if you have some trusted people they can give you some really good feedback and mentorship maybe that needs to be part of some job descriptions right right hey be, before you go on to the become a supervisor we want you to mentor i don't know a couple of people for six months or something like oh, that. Oh, so that's interesting. Oh, huh. right. Yeah. So you, yeah. you, you build that in and it helps people become more open talking to each other. Um, some people are going to hate this, right. And they oh, won't, and yeah. they just, they just won't do it and that's okay. Yeah. If you'll they're know. good at their job Yeah, and they, they want to stay there. So yeah, but that um, like the, giving people the opportunity to fail safely yeah, is that's really good. Huge, right? Because I, like you said, you give before you can become a supervisor, you need to, you know, successfully mentor two other people or, or something, you know, something like that. Yeah. And they do the first one and they realize I didn't like this. You can have that there conversation, right? Because you haven't put them in the supervisor role. It literally was a test, but it's an open test. Like everybody I knows like this test yeah. is happening. And and now you can say, okay, well. If you're in a supervisor or management type role, you're going to need to be doing this all the time. Maybe this isn't your thing, or maybe you you need to learn more to to get there, to get more comfortable with that. Which which path would you like to take here? You know, yeah. and and yeah. you can you can avoid the Peter principle, which so often takes a spectacularly right. technical person, and 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 I say technical meaning doing a hands-on thing could be right. sales. It could be, you know, actual like technology or whatever and taking that person in and because they're so good at their job, moving them into a management role in theory to help create other people who are as good at them. And so many times it's like, that's not how it works. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, kind of wrapping this up, I think you have to keep it fluid and you have to, constantly discuss that because everything changes yeah you know? and you don't want to be so locked in that you're like oh i can't take that move because i wrote this told this person this or whatever so you got to have that discussion about how the only constant uh, thing is that nothing stays the same right right uh, yeah of course and, of course yeah and and i and i don't think you need to make it easy well no we've talked about that like it's it yeah. should not be easy yeah no the that was one of the parts something... i liked the best about this yeah yeah they need to work hard for to to advance um and they need to be involved in in their own success yeah um and and then that, lastly the real added benefit of the a lot of this stuff is it it helps really attract some great talent. If you have mm. these programs in place, some people really love it. Talk about it on your website, LinkedIn, newsletters. Make it part of your business story about how, hey, we're doing more for people in our community, trying to create more opportunities for them. You know, really promote that because people love that. They love to connect with companies, especially now on a different level. And if you're a you know, small business and you're doing these kinds of things, creating opportunities, you should be talking about it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. This has been... Yeah, two, thanks for I'm talking about it. It's good. Yeah, two episodes that are super helpful. Uh, I definitely learned the most this time, so I, I get Maybe. to, I get I to check that box. I, I learned a lot by taking these notes, and it yeah. reminds me of a lot of things, and yeah. I can do some research, but we would love to get your feedback on what you like about this, what you think I got wrong. Feedback at businessshow.co or... Come visit us on Facebook at the uh, Small Business Support Group, businessshow.co slash Facebook. Slash Facebook. There. Yeah, yeah. And if there's somewhere else that you think you'd like to see us or to be a part of uh, a community, let us know because we want to go where you are. Where are you? Where do you hang out every day? Let us know. Not that we're going to come stalk you. Like we, we want to do this in an okay way. But, you know, and hopefully a digital way, because it's Shannon and I are on different edges of the country. So we got to make that part work. But, yeah, let us yes. know where you are. Yeah, it's good. Thanks for listening, folks. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for checking out our sponsors. Itrust.capital slash SBS. Bambi.com slash small. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. Yeah.